Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing to my channel. And while you're at it, smash that like button for me. I really would appreciate it. Also, hit that post notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. Be careful down in the comment section of the videos. A lot of spam, a lot of scammers. I will never ask you to contact me by WhatsApp or Telegram. I also do not invest money for my subscribers, so please be careful. Don't get yourself scammed. If you want up to 12 free stocks, Weeble is gonna give you up to 12 free stocks when you open a new Weeble brokerage account. Put any amount of money in that brokerage account. They're gonna give you up to 12 free stocks for just trying out their brokerage app. There's a link down in the description box of this video. Click on that Weeble link. Open up your new Weeble account today. Go get that free stock. Go get that free money. I'm also going to send you a free Weeble tutorial video to walk you through how to use the Weeble app to make your first trade. All you got to do is DM me on Instagram at richardfain28. Let me know you opened that Weeble account. Let me know you funded that Weeble account. And I'm going to send you that free Weeble tutorial video to walk you through how to start building wealth immediately. How to invest $1,000 per month and never work again. When I was 26 years old, I read a book with that very title, How to Invest a thousand dollars and never work again a couple of questions i had though when i started reading that book the first one was where was i gonna get a thousand dollars per month in the first place the second question was how long do I have to invest that $1,000 before I never work again? And I thought those were two valid questions. And those are the two questions I'm going to answer for you today. Number one question, where do I get the $1,000 per month from? Well, your number one tool to build wealth is your income. So without income, you don't build wealth. So the thousand dollars per month will need to come from some type of income, whether it be your primary income or whether it be a secondary source of income. That's where the thousand dollars per month comes from. How do I earn enough money to have a thousand dollars per month left over? That's another good question. Here's what I recommend. I recommend you sit yourself down, pull out a piece of paper, pull out a pencil, and you start writing down all of your expenses. And if your expenses exceed your income, then you're doing something wrong. You won't have $1,000 per month. The only way you have $1,000 per month left is your income has to exceed your expenses. So that's step one. People say, well, how do I, how do I have the thousand dollars? How do I have a hundred dollars? How do I have two thousand? Pretty simple. Sit down, you know, pencil to paper, old fashioned way, and start writing down your expenses. And if your expenses are more than your income, guys, you have to cut some of those expenses or you got to increase your income. That's it. Increase your income or cut your expenses. That's up to you. Either way, you're going to have to do one or both. 
if you want to free up $1,000 a month so you can invest it and you never have to work again. Number one tool to build wealth is income. Without income, there is no wealth building. Let's get that straight. There is no way to build wealth unless you have income. I guess somebody could actually give you wealth, but we already know history and the historical numbers tell us only 12% of millionaires inherit their money. 88% of millionaires do what? They're self-made. They got to go out and earn it. So the likelihood of someone giving you enough wealth so that you never have to work again is not very good. So that's not a strategy I would hang my hat on. The strategy you need to hang your hat on is getting yourself out there and earning, making income, and then keeping that income so that you have money that you can invest, $1,000 per month that you can invest to build wealth. So that's the first question answered for you. How do I get $1,000 per month? Number one, you got to earn it. Number two, you got to keep it. And you keep it by doing what? Minimalizing your expenses. Do not be buying things that you don't need to make someone else wealthy. That's how you make and free up $1,000 per month. Well, I'm working a minimum wage job and it's not paying me enough. Then you got to go find a job that pays you more. You have to increase what? Your skill level. You got to become more valuable to the marketplace. And the way you become more valuable to the marketplace is you got to offer the market something that will make the market money. And then you become more valuable. They pay you more. But if you have a low income skill set, you can't think someone's going to pay you the way they would pay someone with a high income skill set. You can't think that. But people do, though, for some reason. They think, oh, no, no. This is the world we live in, guys, is you get rewarded based on your financial value to the marketplace. If you have a low financial value to the marketplace, no one's going to pay you what they're going to pay someone who brings in a high value to the marketplace. They're not. So you can sit around and feel sorry for yourself or you can get out and increase your skill set so that you become more valuable to the marketplace and you make more money. A thousand dollars a month, guys, is a lot of money. But you can have that. You can invest that thousand dollars a month if you increase your skill set, if you add more value to your skill set. Right. There's no reason in America that someone I don't care who you are. You can't make the type of money you want to make if you're willing to get out there and increase your skill set. Increase your financial value to the marketplace. There's no reason why you can't make a boatload of money, man. You can't. But what most people do is they will sit around and make all the excuses why they can't instead of making reasons why they can. Right. Coming up with reasons why they can, they choose to come up with reasons why they can't. And that's the one percent. That's the programming. Right. That's that programming. So I answered your first question. Where do I get the thousand dollars? You get it from your income. That's where you get the thousand dollars that you're going to need to free up every single month to be able to invest for a certain period of time so that you never have to work again, guys. Step two. How long am I going to have to invest this money, Richard? OK, I did what you told me in step one, which is get out, increase my skill set, make more money, keep more money. You're right. I did that part. You asked me to do that. You recommended that I do that. And I followed your recommendation and I did it. Now I got the thousand dollars a month. But here's the deal. How long do I got to invest this thousand dollars a month before I get to a point where I never have to work again? Well, that's going to be different for everybody, guys, right? For me, I had to do it for about a 20-year period. But I never have to work again now. So for me, that was okay. But here's, let me, let me, give, you some, let me give you some examples of how long you'll need to do this in order to never work again. Let's, let's look at a few examples. So if I took $1,000 a month, right? That's $12,000 a year. And I invested it for 10 years. 
right? And I got an 8% rate of return on my investment. Then at the end of that 10 years, I got $175,000 in my brokerage account or in my financial freedom account. Let's call it that. I got 175K in my financial freedom account. Now for some people, 175K is sufficient. That's their little nest egg, right? Maybe, maybe they got a pension coming in. Maybe they got social security coming in. You know, maybe they got some other type of uh, uh, money coming in that's gonna be reoccurring for work they did in the past, right? Maybe. But maybe they only needed a couple hundred thousand dollars to supplement that. On a couple hundred thousand dollars at a 6% rate of return, that's about $12,000 a year. That's a that's $1,000 a month somebody would be adding to their income. That $1,000 a month may be all they need. So they could, they could take $1,000 a month of their active income, put it in an investment that they can get an 8% rate of return, right? Do that for 10 years and they got a couple hundred thousand dollars in their financial freedom account. They get a 6% rate of return on that 200,000. That creates $12,000 a year in passive income divided by 12, that's $1,000 a month. Boom, they never have to work again. It took 10 years, they made an investment of $1,000 a month for 10 years and boom, now they get $1,000 a month in passive income for the rest of their life. Let's say someone says, you know something, Richard, the couple hundred K ain't gonna do it. I need a little more than that. I'm willing to invest $1,000 a month for 15 years. Same 8% rate of return. What would I end up with hypothetically? Well, you're gonna end up with about $325,000 in your financial freedom account. So that's $1,000 a month at an 8% rate of return. You do that over the next 15 years consistently. You got about $350,000, 325, dollars in your financial freedom account. Let's just say you got three hundred k in there. You take that three hundred k times a 6% rate of return when you get to where you want to start drawing income off of that 300 k That's about what, $18,000 a year. That's $1,500 a month in passive income, guys. That's you taking $1,000 a month, investing it in an investment that'll give you 8% rate of return. You do that for 15 years, you got over $350,000. So you're basically making about $20,000 a year in passive income which is a pretty good number. I can tell you right now, guys, I get that just from my little small little NFL pension that I get from the NFL for my little three years in the NFL. I get about a $20,000 a year pension, man. I'm gonna tell you something, guys. That, 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 that little money that comes into my account, I'm gonna tell you, it, it, it feels good every month to get, you know, basically $1,650 a month I get for the rest of my life because I did what? for work I did in the past, now I get paid in perpetuity for the rest of my life, passive income. Spent three years in the NFL, now I get $20,000 a year in passive income. So what I'm telling you guys, it all adds up, right? Right, it all adds up. Now, for someone that says, you know something, I need more than, than $20,000 a year in passive income. I need more than that. That's not enough for me. I need more. And I'm willing to do what? I'm willing to take that $1,000 a month and invest it for the next 20 years. I'm gonna do it for 20 years. But I need to know how much passive income I can expect at the end of that 20 years. Me putting that $1,000 a month in at an 8% rate of return. Well, guess what? You're gonna have over half a million dollars in that financial freedom account. You're going to have almost close to $560,000 in your financial freedom account. Let's just say you end up, let's just say you end up with a half a mil in there. $1,000 a month. You've committed to investing that $1,000 a month for the next 20 years. You got half a million dollars in your financial freedom account. You get a 6% rate of return on that. 
That's $30,000 a year, guys, in passive income. $30,000 a year in passive income. That's $2,500 a month in passive income. And maybe that gets you to your never have to work for anyone else again. There you go. So that power of $1,000 a month depends on how long you can invest it. How long you want to invest it will determine what your passive income is. Let's say you need more than the 30 though, and you're willing to invest for longer. Let's say you're willing to invest that thousand dollars a month for the next 25 years. 25 years, thousand dollars a month, every single month, 8% rate of return. You're looking at $900,000 in your financial freedom account. That's just taking a thousand dollars a month, guys putting it in something like an S&P 500 ETF or index fund that delivers at least an 8% rate of return over that 25 year period. That'll give you a close to 900K in your financial freedom account. Take 6% annualized rate of return on that 900K, I believe, not the best with math, but I believe that's about $56,000 a year maybe $54,000 a year. That's almost $5,000 per month that you'll be getting. Passive income, guys, $5,000 per month, $60,000 a year because you did what? You took $1,000 a month, you put it in something that would give you an 8% rate of return over the next 25 years, and you got basically a million bucks in your financial freedom account. Let's say one step further. You say, no, the, 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 the $5,000 a month is great, but I need more. And I'm willing to go out 30 years. I'm willing to take $1,000 a month and invest it for 30 years. But I need to know where I'm going to end up at, or at least have a good idea. Well, you're going to have about $1.4 million in your financial freedom account. $1.4 million dollars not bad not bad at all now you're getting yourself up to that 80 90 hundred thousand dollars a year in passive income on your 1.4 1.5 million dollar nest egg that's how people build wealth guys in the real world right that's what the scenarios i just gave you is how people build wealth in the real world how do I know that? Because that's how I did it. There ain't no, oh, I'm going to wake up one morning and I'm just going to have two million bucks. No, that's not how it's done. How it's done is exactly what I just told you. People sit down and say, OK, here's how much money I need when I get to the golden years. Here's how much money I need when I never want to work again. I need two thousand a month. I need three thousand a month. I need four thousand a month. I need five thousand a month. And how long? First of all, how much money do I need to invest and for how long to get that $2,000 a month, to get that $3,000 a month, to get that $5,000 a month? That's the way you plan to never work again, guys. You don't just wake up one morning and say, oh, I never want to work again, but you do no planning in order to make that happen, make that a reality. You got to make it a reality. And this is how you make it a reality. You sit down and say, well, okay, I'm going to take this $1,000 a month. I'm going to invest it for 10 years. I'm going to invest it for 15 years. I'm going to invest it for 20 years. And when I do that, and I faithfully do that, I want to be able to have X amount of income generated from my assets. That's how you plan and prepare to never work again. You don't just wake up one morning and someone says, oh, you never got to work again. Guess what? Overnight, you just got blessed. Someone gave you a million bucks. No, that's never going to happen for you. So don't think about that. What you need to think about is exactly what I just told you. Think about that. Now, let's say we got a person that says, you, so, you know something, Richard, I ain't got no problem with making money. And, and I ain't no way in the world I'm finna stay investing to get them my never to work again for 20 years. I don't want to do that. I want to do it earlier. I want to do it faster. I want to do it quicker. Here's a, here's a, here's a, a hypothetical for you. If you want to do it so fast and so quick, Again, what did I say? Number one, two to build wealth is what? Income. So, so it makes sense to me 
if income is the number one tool to build wealth, the more income I put into an investment, that's paying me an 8% rate of return. The more income I put into that investment, the faster I get to my number, right? Let's say I took $10,000 a month. All right? Let's say I put, took $10,000 a month and I put it into something that got an 8% rate of return. And I did that for the next 10 years. Guess how much money I'm going to have? 1.82 million. 1.8 to $2 million in my financial freedom account. If I got $2 million in my financial freedom account in 10 years times 6% rate of return, that's going to produce $120,000 a year in passive income, guys. Divided by what? 12? That gives me $10,000 a month in income. And it only took me 10 years to do it. But I had to increase my income and I had to increase my investment. I had to speed it up. That's how you get there quicker, guys. Oh, I don't got 10 years. I don't got 20 years to wait. I don't got 10 years to wait. You don't have to. But I can tell you this. If you're dead broke and you ain't got no money, you got no plan to get no money, you're fooling yourself. You ain't going to never get there because you need income. See, that's what y'all fail to understand, a lot of y'all. Y'all fail to understand you actually need income. Because I, I get people email me all the time. Well, hey, uh, I want passive income. I want to start investing right now and I want passive income next month. Well, you might get passive income, but it's going to be pennies. I keep telling y'all dividends because people are always talking about dividends, dividends. Ooh, what dividend stocks do you recommend? What dividend ETFs do you recommend? What dividend mutual? Guys, <laughs> let me tell you something. Let me give you a little, little investment 101, passive income 101. Dividends don't mean crap unless you got a boatload of investments to produce bigger dividends. You put in $1,000 a month into some dividend ETF ain't going to pay you crap. It's going to pay you pennies. Do some research on dividends and how dividends work, guys. I'm no expert in dividends, but what I do know is I've been getting dividends for a long time because I've been investing in the stock market for 25 years. And I've never taken any dividends. Why? I just reinvest them because they're pennies until you have enough assets. You got to, listen, man, if you get... If, if you want $60,000 a year in dividend income, guys, you got to have at least a million bucks in some dividend stock or dividend ETF. And, and, and guess what? That stock or that ETF has to pay at least a 6% dividend yield, annual dividend yield. That's why I keep telling you, dividends, I'm telling you, it, you got to have assets. You got to already have built wealth before dividends come. If I'm in the building stage of wealth, I want growth stocks. I want growth ETFs. And whatever little dividends they pay me, fine. I just reinvest them back into buying more shares. Now, once I build my assets to 500K, a million, then that's when dividends will pay off and, and generate a nice income for you. But $1,000 a month, or I got $5,000 I want to invest, and I want to live off the dividends, you're going to be living a really, 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 really tight life because you ain't going to make no dividends. Not off $5,000 in, in, in investment. Even a $50,000 investment ain't going to make you crap in dividends, guys. You got to understand dividends, like I said, they only make sense when you got big, you've already built your wealth. For instance, I can go to AT&T. Right, AT&T is going to be paying at least a five or six uh, percent annualized yield or dividend, whatever you want to call it. I just like to call it interest rate. Right? They're going to pay you five or six percent interest rate. That's that's if you go to AT&T and you buy their stock. They say for holding your money in our stock, we will pay you a five or six percent dividend yield or interest rate. So what people will do is, is when they build their wealth, they'll take their wealth or a part of their wealth. Let's say someone built their wealth to two million bucks. Now they never want to work again. They'll take that wealth and they'll go to some company like AT&T who pays a pretty high dividend yield and say, well, OK, I'm going to park a million dollars here with AT&T. And if they pay me a 5% dividend yield annually, that's $50,000 in income. I'll take the other thousand and I'll go over here and put it with an ETF or I'll put it in a bond. Maybe I'll go put it in a treasury bond for two years that pays me a 5% rate 
yield. Now that person has taken $2 million and split it up. They get 50,000 from AT&T on a 5% dividend yield. They get another 50,000 from a treasury dividend yield or a treasury yield, not a dividend yield, but a treasury interest rate yield, right? That's $1,000, that's $100,000 a year this person has created in passive income because they already got $2 million. But for somebody who is just trying to start building wealth, you can talk about dividends all you want, but you ain't gonna get no dividends because you ain't got enough money invested to make enough, to generate enough income from dividends. So don't worry about dividends. What you worry about is if I'm in the building stage of wealth, where can I find the best investments that give me the growth that I need in order to build my assets to a point where they're high enough, then I can go find dividend stocks or dividend ETFs or dividend index funds. Then I can start generating some income. I'm not going to generate enough income off a little thousand dollars a month investment, guys. You're not. You're going to generate pennies. So, so we got we to gotta educate ourselves a little bit on, you know, what are dividends and how they're paid. Right. We got to We got to do that and spend a little bit more time thinking about that. And again, I'm no expert here, but I guarantee you, you put a thousand dollars a month and you can go find the highest dividend paying stock you want to find and put your thousand dollars a month in there. You're going to get pennies. That's all you're going to get. You're going to get pennies. Thousand dollars is not enough. It need to be a hundred thousand. It need to be five hundred thousand. It need to be a million. Then you can start generating some real income to take care of yourself, right? So how to invest a thousand dollars per month and never work again. Recap for the, those of you guys who are coming in the live late. Number one is income. You got to have income guys. And then it's what you do with that income it makes all the difference. So I can make $10,000 a month in income, but if I'm spending $11,000 a month in income, I'm still broke. I still have no money to build wealth to never work again. Yes, I might have a great lifestyle, but I got to go to work every day in order to maintain that lifestyle. That's the difference. I don't want to have to go to work. When I get up in the mornings, guys, I don't have to worry about going to work. I, I, I don't go to work. I just get up and do whatever I want to do. Why? Because I paid the financial price for over 20 to 25 years where I was making great income but I was taking that income and I was investing it heavily into real estate and into the stock market through paper assets. And then over time, over a 20 year period, I built my assets high enough so that I can generate passive income from those investments if that's what I choose to do. But that's the only way I got myself in a position where I never had to work again, right? And I would say 90% of us are going to fall in that category. There's 10% of people out there. Let's go back to that. 88% of us fall in that category. There are 12% of people out there who don't fall in that category because they inherit their wealth. 88% of us are going to have to be self-made. We're going to have to create our own wealth. And you don't do that by not understanding how wealth is created. A lot of us do not understand how wealth is created. We do not understand the fundamental building blocks of building wealth. We don't. And that's what this channel is trying to help educate some of you guys is the basic fundamental things. How to build wealth. It's not all this fancy stuff you see these people talking about. No. That ain't going to do nothing but confuse you and keep you scared. The fundamental things you got to do is you got to earn income. And you got to keep that income. And then you have to multiply the income you keep. That's how you build wealth. And you do it over a long enough period of time. But before I can do any of that game plan, and before I can even, even start on that blueprint, I got to have in my head, in my filter system, what am I trying to accomplish? That's the first question I ask people when they email me or DM me about, um, oh, I, I want to get the freedom, but, but uh, how much do I need to invest? Mm -mm. I don't want to talk about how much you potentially need to invest. What I need to ask you is, is what are you trying to accomplish? At the end of the day, what is your primary goal here? What type of income do you need in order for you never have to work again? 
That's what you need to be focused on. Number one priority is how much income do I need to have coming in in order to never have to work again? And let me, let me just give you a little hint here, guys. You need to be realistic. Don't sense that you throwing out a number. Oh, yeah, uh, I need $20,000 a month coming in so that I never have to work again. But right now, you ain't even got $1,000 a month coming in. But you want to jump from not even having $1,000 a month coming in, you want $20,000 a month. See, that's not realistic, guys. That's not. Let's just be honest. It's not realistic. You can't go from having $1,000 a month in income to $20,000 all of a sudden. You, it, it's, it don't make any sense, right? So what you got to do is be realistic with yourself. And I tell people this all the time. I say, well, okay, how much money are you making now? How much, how much are you making now? How much are you taking home? If someone says, hey, you know, Richard, right now I'm bringing home 5K a month. That's what I'm bringing home. I said, that's a good place to start for passive income. Let's take our active income, which is 5,000 a month we're bringing home, and we want to turn that into passive income, $5,000 a month. That's the minimum we want to start working on. And that's how you start putting a game plan together to take your active income, whatever you're making, and flip it to passive income. Active income is where I got to get up in the morning and I got to go to work. I don't care if I'm on my computer at home, working from home, or I got to physically get up, get in a car, get on the train, take the bus, take my bicycle and go to work. It's still active income, guys. I don't care if you're at home, not at home. It's active income because some people are not going to pay you unless you give them some time. That's active income. Passive income is where I get up in the morning and I just have a cup of coffee. I go for a walk. I read a book. I listen to music. I go in, about in my garden, whatever I do, that's not work, but I still get an income every month. Why? Because I got assets. I got assets that generate income. That's the goal. The goal is to trade out our time we're trading for money to buy back that time, to get that time back so we can go do whatever we want to do, right? That's the key. We want to have more time, more choices, and more freedom in our life. That's the goal of financial freedom. That's the goal we all should be striving for at some point. The key is we got choices, we got time, and we got freedom. Now, if I choose to continue working, that's much different on my psychology, my filter system, than if I was forced to work. See, when I choose to work because that's something I love doing, there's no pressure. There's no financial pressure on me. There's no stress in my life. Why? Because I choose to do this. But when I'm forced to do something, because that's the only way I can take care of myself, that's when some financial stress comes. That's where the pain comes. And that's where you don't have choices. When you don't have choices, guess what? You don't have choices. I'd rather have choices in my life. The only way you get more choices in your life when it comes to your financial life is if you've got assets that can generate income and replace that active income. If I don't have income, passive coming in to replace my active, then I'm going to be on the hamster wheel for the rest of my life. I'm going to be in the rat race. I got no other choice. I got to take care of myself. Ain't nobody going to give me nothing. You already know that. So if ain't nobody going to give me nothing, I got to get out here and earn it. So either I'm going to be in the rat race on the hamster wheel for the rest of my life, working for somebody, exchanging time for money, or I'm going to take this money that I do earn over a certain period of time, invest it in assets that build wealth and create passive income. That's freedom. That's where invest $1,000 a month, never work again, comes into play. That's what I did. I just took my active income and I invested it in real estate and I invested it in the stock market. And I just did that for 20 years. And at the end of that 20 years, I never had to work again, period. Some people do it in 10 years. Some people do it in five years. Some people do it in one year. But it's very, very hard to do it in one year. That's why a lot of people don't do it. You got people can't even do it in 20 years. That's why 100 million Americans, adults, don't have any retirement savings. That's how hard it is, guys. We only got 350 million people in this country. And you got a third of them. Got no money in retirement. I'm not at zero. So it's hard. So let, let's, let's get our mind right. And the way we get our mind right is we got to figure out what we're really trying to accomplish and then say, well, okay, 
It's unrealistic for me to think I can go from zero net worth to a million dollar net worth in one year. It's, it's pretty unrealistic to have that goal. It's pretty unrealistic to think you can invest $1,000 a month, but for some kind of miraculous way, you're going to get $500 a month in income. Guys, it's unrealistic. It don't work that way. Now, a scammer will tell you it works that way because they want to scam you out of your money. But in the real world, it don't work that way. You don't. The real world is, is this. I got to pay the financial price for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. I got to pay the financial price. Once I do that, then I get, I never have to work again. That's, that's the real world. It, it's not, oh, you know, my neighbor said that I can get into this little get rich quick scheme and, 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 and put in $5,000 and I can expect, you know, a $25,000 return in a few months. Oh yeah, I'm going to invest in uh, crypto mining. They say, yeah, I can put my $5,000 in this crypto mining operation and they're going to generate at least $20,000 a month for me. That's a lie. That's just a scam to get your money. And that's what people do, though, because why? They want a shortcut. Let's face it, guys. In the United States, most of us want shortcuts. We don't want to do nothing long term. We only want short term. Why? Because that's how we're programmed from birth. See, we're programmed to want everything now. That's how our financial system has, has gotten 99% of us. It got us in a point where we have no patience. All we wanted is right now. That's why we got, a, 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 we got over $1.2 trillion in credit card debt because we got no patience. People want it right now. They don't want to work for a period of time and say, I'm going to save up, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm delay gratification for a year, and then I'm going to go do this. No, uh-uh, I'm going it right now. I can get a 0% on, on a, on a $15,000 credit card, and, and as soon as I get the credit card, it's maxed. But I got a year to pay it off. Guess what? But I never pay it off. Why? Because I'm not financially responsible. I don't have a budget. I'm living on more than what I make. But yet and still, I convince myself, I rationalize, I'm going to have some magical way to pay it off in, in, in a year. And you don't. Guess what? You get stuck. Now you got a 25% APY on 15 grand. That's choking you financially. That's how, we, that's how we're programmed. So I keep telling you guys, you got to reprogram yourself. You can say whatever you want to say about my titles or my videos or whatever you want to say, but I've done this, guys. I done done it. I, I understand how this game on YouTube works. See, that's one thing about me. I don't live in some fantasy world. I live in the real world. I live in this real world that don't care nothing about you. Will run over you and then back up and run over you again and then go forward and run over you again. That's the world I live in. And when you get in that world and start understanding that, you're going to understand how things work and it's going to be to your benefit. Especially in this financial game, man. If you don't know the rules for our financial game in this country, you cannot get in the game. You cannot participate. And if you can't participate, guess what? You're going to work for the rest of your life. You just are. So all I'm telling you is, is this. If you want to build wealth and you truly want to build wealth, figure out a strategy. I've given you a blueprint. I'm not going to hold your hand and skip you down the yellow brick road to see the Wizard of Oz. I'm not going to do that. What I will tell you is, is what I've done. And you certainly are able, certainly are able to mirror that. Why? Because that's what most Americans do, that build wealth. Go talk to them. 88% of people that build wealth and get to millionaire status are self-made. And they didn't do it overnight, guys. They did exactly what I just said. They figure out, where am I going to get the money from? And then they figure out, how long do I got to invest this money? And guess what they do? They buckle down. They delay gratification and they get to the mission. And it may take them five, it might take them 10, it might take them 15, it might take them 20, it might take them 30. It's all dependent on you and your income. The more income you put in investments, the quicker you get to financial freedom. The less income you put in investments, the longer it takes you to get to financial freedom. For me, I didn't have a lot of income when I started to put in investments. I had very little income. So it took me longer, but I was okay with that. See, I, I developed a level of patience, a level of discipline, a level of consistency. And that's what you'll need, too. All this impatient crap we live in in this world is just make believe, man. It's 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 a, all a, a, a smoke screen to keep you broke, to keep the one percent fat, to keep you skinny, to keep you financially stressed. 
You got to understand that. Stop listening to the propaganda machine. If you want to be a wealth, it's up to you. No one else. No one else is responsible for your financial freedom, guys. You're responsible for it. So if you're not where you want to be financially, go look in that mirror and, and thank yourself for that. The good news is you can change it if you really want to. Or you can continue to bury your head in the sand and make excuses. That's up to you too. At the end of the day, whatever you want to do, you have the ability to do it. You just got to get a little bit of knowledge and a whole lot of take action. That's all we need. See, most of us got it the other way around though. We want a whole bunch of knowledge, but very little take action. And all that tells me is, is that's somebody who is just afraid, but they want to convince themselves they're doing all the right steps, but they never are taking action to do nothing. That's all it is, guys. I'm just going to give it to you 100. I told you, my, my YouTube channel is just, I'm going to give you my opinion the way I see it. Because I've been there. I've been in a situation where I had no net worth. I've been in a situation where I had no job. I've been in a situation where I had bad credit. And despite all of that, guess what? I never have to work again. So I, I've been there. I, I, so when people go with all these excuses, I just I know right there that person is not ready. They're not reprogrammed yet. They just still in some la la land. In some la la land, you gotta be, because I don't care where you're at financially right now. You can change it if you really want to. You can change it, but you gotta dig down deep and find something inside of you that's gonna force you to change it. You gotta have a compelling reason to change bad financial behaviors and change them into good financial behaviors. You gotta have a compelling reason because it's not easy, it's hard. If it was easy, everybody would be at financial freedom in this country. Everybody would be kicked back, just enjoying life. But instead, 99% of us are out here slaving and working and, 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 and doing everything we can to make 1% wit rich, wealthy, richer. That's what we do. That's why you gotta reprogram yourself. That's why a lot of my videos, that's what I focus on is getting people to think, getting people to see. Listen, man, I don't care how polished, how sophisticated my videos are. If you don't have this right, you're going to miss the whole point anyways. See, so for me, you know, taking a whole week to put together some well thought out, very well scripted, uh, all type of pictures and all that stuff that does nothing, man. It does nothing because most people ain't going to accept it because they, they, they ain't reprogrammed themselves. They might watch it and hit the like button, but they ain't going to do anything because they got to reprogram themselves. So for me, it starts with the reprogramming. It starts with you deciding what you really are trying to accomplish. And then that's when the journey starts. The journey starts once you reprogram and decide what's important to you. Then your financial journey starts. Because you have all the education in the world, if you don't have a compelling reason to change anything in your life, you're not. You're not. People don't change unless there's something that forces them to change. And typically, it got to be something personal to them. I know, man. I got family members that I've, I've tried to pour into, and these people just, they ain't going to do it. And so why, why am I doing it? I stopped. Pray for them at night and I, I, I stop. I just, I just give them up to God, right? So the same thing in your life. No one can change your behaviors. You got to change those. But the only way you're going to change them is you got to dig down deep and figure out what's important to you and figure out a compelling reason to force you to change. And that's when the journey starts. That's when the wealth building journey starts is when you agree to, 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 to do away with financial killers, right? That's pride, that's greed, and fear. Those are your three financial killers, right? And you trade those three financial killers in for these, these, these financial prosper behaviors, right? These three financial prosper behaviors, consistency, discipline, and patience, right? You got to change, you got to do away with the financial killers and you got to adapt these, these financial prosper behaviors, right? You will prosper with these behaviors. You will not prosper with these financial killer behaviors. You won't. 
So you got to change that. You got to trade that in. You got to reprogram and, and, and start thinking about, okay, here's my income. All right, it's not sufficient. What can I do to get it better? See, that's how you got to start thinking. All right, it's not sufficient to get me to my goal. My goal is $1,000 a month for the next 10 years. If I can do that, I know I can, I, I can build my assets to 200K and I know at the 200K mark, I should be able to generate $12,000 a year in passive income. Divide it by 12, there's my $1,000 a month. So, if I'm, so in the next 10 years, if I'm getting ready to go into my golden years where I never work again, and I know I'm gonna need an additional $1,000 a month to pull it all off, here's my plan to do that. I'm gonna take $1,000 a month, I'm gonna put it in an S&P 500 ETF that tracks the S&P 500 index. And the reason I'm gonna do that is when I look at the S&P over the last 90 years, I know on average, on an average over a 90 year period, it's delivered a seven to 10% rate of return. Boom, there's my investment, that's the only investment I need. That's the top 500 companies in America, that's all I need. I don't need to complicate it. I'm good with the history of the S&P when it comes to multiplying money. It should give me an 8% return. It should. There's no guarantee, but history says it should. So that's what I'm going with. Now, that doesn't mean I don't pivot. You know, I'm three, four years into this thing and I'm not happy with my, my, my return. Guess what? I pivot and I go to a different one. That's all I got to do. The, the, the key, though, is, is I got to get in the behavior of taking $1,000 a month and putting it in something that'll multiply it. And I do that for the 10 years. And at the end of the 10 years, my expectation is, is I'm going to have a couple hundred grand in there. And then I'm going to get $12,000 a year in passive income off that 200 grand. And then I'm going to never work again. Right? That's how it works, guys. You have to plan just like that. It can't just be some lackadaisical, oh, I don't know what I want to accomplish. I just uh, saw this guy on YouTube and he said it's a, probably a good idea to build wealth. I have no idea what wealth means to me. I have no idea what I'm trying to accomplish, but I just want to build wealth. You're going to quit. First financial bump you hit in a row, you'll quit. Why? Because you got no compelling reason to not quit. <laughs> the easy thing to do is quit. The hard thing to do is not quit. And of course, in this country, we don't want nothing hard. Right? That's how it is. I know some of you, oh, that's not true. Guys, come on, man. Look at our country. Look at the financial trouble most people are in in this country. And you're going to try to sit here and say it's not true? Well, in my opinion, it is. Because I look at the numbers. The numbers say we're in financial trouble. Americans are in financial trouble. You got $1.3 trillion in credit card debt, guys. You got $1.6 trillion in student loan debt. You got interest rates for a 30-year fixed rate mortgage at 8%. You got the Fed funds rate at 5.5%, the prime rate at 8.5%. I don't know. You got 60 plus percent of Americans living paycheck to paycheck. I don't know. You had personal savings of $2.1 trillion two years ago in the United States. That was a personal savings. $2.1 trillion. Guess what it is today? Two years later, it's about 200 billion. And it's expected by the beginning of 2024, basically a nothing burger, no personal savings. So you're gonna tell me we're not in trouble financially? We, we don't have a programming problem in this country? But yet and still, despite all of that, our economy is still growing at a 2% clip. It's projected that our GDP for the third quarter of 2023 will be over 5%. You know what that tells me? People are still spending money that they don't have. It also tells me your upper 20% of the wealthiest people in this country are really carrying the country right now. And the reason they can carry the country is because 80% of y'all do what? Buy things you don't need to make them wealthier. So they can afford to spend. And that's who's carrying the economy. It ain't the 80%. It's the 20% of the wealthiest people in this country and foreigners. That's what's holding the economy up. It's time for the 99% to change that. It's nothing wrong with having a good time and buying things that you enjoy buying 
if you've built your wealth and you can afford to do that. Problem is, most Americans haven't built their wealth, but they spend anyways, like they're wealthy. Why? Because pride. One of the financial killers, pride. See, pride forces us to do what? Try to make other people impressed by us. See, that's what pride does. And that's one of the biggest financial killers in this country is pride. We want people on the outside for some reason to look at us and think we're doing well. Give us a pat on the back. Oh, you're doing great. Oh, look at the house. Look at the cars. Look at the private school. Oh, look at the Rolex. Oh, you don't work? Oh, you just go to Pilates every day? Oh, you just go to the gym every day? Pride. And that's why we're in the financial shape we're in. And then the second of the three financial killers that, that really are up there is fear. Fear is a monster, boy. Because we mask fear in a lot of different ways, right? We procrastinate. That's a, that's a form of fear. We, 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 we seek, we, we want to over-educate ourselves in certain situations. That's, a, that's, a, that's fear, right? Why, man? Why? Programming. We ain't got our programming right. If we can get our programming right, we can change some of that stuff. But we won't reprogram ourselves. We refuse to. Because we think ain't nothing wrong with us. We think this is the way it should be. And that's where the lie comes in. That's where, that's where you've been deceived. That's where the 1% has tricked you and you have fallen into that trap. I just would hate to see you spend your whole life in a trap. Because right now, that's where you're at. You're in a trap. You're in a financial trap that's been set by the 1%. You, you, and you don't know how to get out of it. But I'm here to tell you some ways to get out of it. Start with reprogramming yourself and figuring out what's important to you in this financial life. And then figure out a way to start taking money. I don't care if you have $1,000 a month, $100 a month, whatever you can afford. And start investing in assets that will build wealth for you. And then over time, you increase that investment and continue increasing it, continue increasing it. A lot of people, oh, golly, the stock market is horrible right now. Why would I invest in something every day is going down in value? Then you don't understand how the stock market works and you don't understand how to build wealth. Because if you understood how to build wealth, you would understand that when it's red, it's, that's where you build your wealth at. <laughs> but see, a lot of us don't understand that. Why? Back to the program, you see. 1% want you to sell when you should be buying. And they want you to buy when you should be selling. That's the trap. That's the financial trap. But if you knew anything about building wealth, you would know you buy assets at one price at a discount and you hold those assets till they trade at a higher price, a.k.a. a premium. And that's where you make your money. So if I'm a long term investor and I'm trying to build wealth over the next 10 years and I'm looking at blue chip assets like Vanguard, S&P 500, VOO, I'm looking at, um, you know, Apple stock, I'm looking at. Tesla stock. I'm looking at NVIDIA stock. I'm looking at uh, Vanguard information technology, VGT. And I'm looking at all of these blue chip investments that are on sale right now. But, but, but if I did my homework, I'll know if I look at the history, the history, the historical performance of those assets, I would know they trade at a premium. At some point, they go back to trading at a premium. So that's where you build wealth, guys. But you got to understand that, though, see. But most of us, we don't try to understand. All we do is we listen to the propaganda machine. We listen to some crazy person on TikTok. <laughs> I mean, who in the hell takes their financial information from TikTok? I'm just, I just, I don't know where our country is, man. Who takes financial information from TikTok? I just don't know what we done turned into in this country. I mean, the ding on TikTok. I got my financial tip from TikTok or somebody on TikTok that's probably 12 years old. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, I don't know what is happening to us in this country, but I tell you, man, it's sad. It is absolutely sad. I would not be taking any financial advice from TikTok. I just wouldn't. I would not take financial advice from anybody that did not speak plain. And from, from I would take it from anybody who don't have experience. I mean, if you watch a YouTuber 
for a long enough period of time, guys, and you really watch them and you really pay attention to what they're doing, you can tell the guys out there that are faking it. And you can tell the guys and gals out there that really know what they're talking about. I mean, just, you can. You can if you really are paying attention and, and not looking at, oh, he got a limbo. Oh, he on a PJ. You know, if that's your gauge of if someone's successful or not on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram, I'll tell you what, it's sad. That's sad. Because let me tell you something, guys. Most millionaires, most people who've built wealth, they don't roll, they don't roll like that. I'm telling you, they don't. Most people don't roll like that who have built wealth organically. Now, if I'm on TikTok, if I'm on YouTube, if I'm on Instagram, and, and, and the only way I get paid is to, 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 to lie to people and, and show this, this unreal lifestyle so that I can get paid, then yeah, that, okay. That's probably what you're seeing, though. That's how these people make their money on these platforms. But if you got somebody that really know how to build wealth and has built their wealth off of these social media platforms, you can tell the difference. If you just pay attention long enough and listen, you can pay attention. Right. If, if, if everything about the Lambo, if everything about flash and dash, that's a concern for me because that's not reality for most of us. Reality is most of us will never see the inside of a private jet. That's reality, guys. Reality is most of us will never own a Lambo. The reality is most of us will never own a Rolex watch. But guess what? Who cares? I don't care about any of that. All I care about is freedom. All I care about is creating assets that generate enough passive income so that I can get out and do the things that really are important to me, like my health, like my peace of mind, like my personal enjoyment, like my relationships. See, that's the thing that should matter to you. Not all this superficial crap. So I don't build wealth for all the superficial stuff. Now I got some nice stuff. I got some nice stuff, but I built my wealth so that my wealth pays for my nice stuff. I'm not having to go to some job that I hate in order to pay for the stuff that I have, guys. I don't have to do that. That's the difference. Now, if I had to get up in the morning and go to work every day and trade time for money to pay for this house, to pay for the cars that I have, then yeah, you guys could look at me and say, yeah, this guy's, you know, I don't know if this guy knows what he's talking about. But I don't have to do any of that. I ain't got to do any of that. I just get up in the morning and do whatever I want to do, which I love making YouTube videos. I love doing the live streams. But all the rest of the stuff that goes along with YouTube, I don't even do, guys. There's a lot of other stuff I could be doing, man, to make money on YouTube. Tons of it. That I've turned down all of. Why? Because that's not why I'm here. I make enough money to do what I need to do in my lifestyle. See, for me, it's not about making as much money as I can make. It never has been about that. For me, it's about purpose, passion. Because I've already paid the financial price. I've already been on that hamster wheel. I've already been in that rat race. I made a lot of money, but I made more money for the people I work for. I made them a lot more money than I made. But see, I was smart enough to understand how this financial system worked. So I said, yeah, I got to trade time for money and I'm going to make these people wealthier. But guess what? In the process, I'm going to get my little piece of that wealth, but I'm going to take it and I'm going to invest it in assets. So at some point, I can get off this hamster wheel. At some point, I can remove myself out of the rat race. See, I was smart enough to know that. Nope, 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 nope. I'm not buying that BMW. Not right now. I'm going to stay in this Ford I got. I'm going to stay in this Ford Expedition. I'm not going to go get that, 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 that BMW, you know, X5M. It looked good. It's fast. It's beautiful. But I ain't doing it. I'm not at, I'm not at my financial freedom goals yet. I got to get to my net worth. Once I get to my net worth, then I'm going to go out and get me an M5. Then I'm going to go out and buy me a Ferrari. Then I'm going to go out and buy me a Range Rover SVR and any other thing that I want. But I got to get to the net worth number. I got to get to the net worth. I got to get to the net worth. See, that's all I was thinking. Get to the net worth first. Because even though that little superficial stuff, that little materialistic stuff is cool, freedom is more important to me. Getting up in the morning, getting myself out, taking an hour-long walk, getting my cardio up, getting my, my body 
my temple healthy, keeping it healthy, right? Being able to eat properly, being able to sleep properly, stress-free. That's more important to me than Lambos and all the rest of this crap. So you got to find out, guys, what's important to you. And then you got to put a game plan together to get there. $1,000 a month and never work again. You fill in the blanks. You fill in the blanks. You can take $1,000 a month and never work again, guys, if you do it right. That's the whole point of the video, is take $1,000 a month, invest it properly for a period of time. But see, you should already know what that period of time is. You should already know what, you, what type of income you want to generate from your investments at a specific period of time. A lot of you have heard me talk about target date, net worth, I mean target date, target net worth, and target amount. You guys have heard me talk about that. Many of you have on my videos. And that's all I'm talking about today, those three things. Before you can start investing, you need to know those three things. You need to know what your target net worth is. You need to know what your target date is. And you need to know what your target amount is. Amount is. If you know those three things. You've got to know those three things before you start investing. Because guess what? Without knowing those three things, how are you going to put the plan together? How are you going to stick to the plan? Because those three things is what's going to motivate you to keep going when you want to quit. If you don't know those three things, you're going to quit. Period. Because you ain't got no reason to do it. Why, why would I invest $1,000 a month if I have no idea why I'm investing? <laughs> Other than what somebody said on YouTube. You're going to quit. So do yourself a favor. Sit yourself down. And again, guys, you don't have to invest $1,000 a month. The $1,000 a month is just, is just a starting point. If you don't have $1,000 a month, invest what you do have. The blueprint is the same. The dollar amount may come down, but the blueprint is the same. And you're just going to have to invest for longer. If I can't put $1,000 a month in and commit to a 10-year period of doing that, then I can't get to a couple hundred thousand, in my opinion, fast. If I can only commit to $500, now, if someone goes out there and hits a home run and instead of getting an 8% rate of return, you get an 18% rate of return over 10 years, of course you can make up that ground. But how many of us are going to get an 18 20% return over a 10-year period consistently? I, I don't think none of us can do that. Maybe, but I don't think so. I think 8% on average is probably where you need to be thinking. So in that scenario, you need $1,000 a month for 10 years. 8% rate of return, it'll get you a couple hundred thousand dollars in your nest egg. And that couple hundred thousand dollars will create $1,000 a month in passive income. That's how you do it, guys. That's the system. Right? If you know a better system, use it. If you don't, think about using the system I just gave you. I'm not your financial advisor. I can't tell you what to do. All I can give you is information that was helpful to me in my wealth building process over the last 25 years. And I still use it right now because I'm building more wealth. If you want to participate in that, there's a Weeble link down in the description box. Click on that Weeble link. Open up your new Weeble account today. They're going to give you up to 12 free stocks for trying out their what? Their brokerage account. It's a brokerage account I use every day, and I have been using it every day for almost two and a half years. So if you want to buy paper assets to build wealth and put that $1,000 a month into something, there's a good brokerage app to use. If you don't want to use Weeble, don't use it, guys. I really don't care. Trust me, I've been doing this for a long time, guys. And I've, I've, I do well. So I don't, I'm not going to beg somebody to try Weeble. If you don't want to try it, don't. Guess what? There's 4.5 billion people on the internet. 4.5 billion. Do you really think I care if one or two people don't want to try Weeble? No. Why? Because I hustle, man. I'm a grinder. I know how to do this thing. I know how to make money. So I don't worry about if a few decide they want to criticize the app that I use. Who cares? It's 4.5 billion people on the internet. I will never run out enough people to talk to Weeble about. Never. Not in 10 lifetimes. Not with 4.5 billion people who have access to the internet. Same thing with the YouTube channel. I will never run out of new subscribers, guys, as long as I do this. Why? Because there's people out there that need financial help. And I'm one of these people that are offering them financial help. Whether they take all of it or not, that's on them. But I'm offering it. And I'm credible. Why? Because I've done it for 25 years. 
So I don't worry about a couple people who complain about Weeble or, oh, what you got to say Weeble? Guess what? Don't watch my YouTube channel. Then guess what? Problem solved. Poof. Magically. It's gone. Because I'm going to say what I want to say on my YouTube channel. I'm never going to be disrespectful. I'm never going to berate anybody. But you ain't going to tell me what I can promote and not promote on my YouTube channel. What you probably need to do is go find you another YouTuber to watch. Which is fine. Millions of them out there. I really don't care. 4.5 billion people, guys. You got to think about that. I will never run out of people to make this content for. I don't care if one person views my videos. I'm doing this for whoever out there that wants to view. So if you don't want to view and you're not interested in what I'm talking about, don't watch. I don't really need you criticizing me. Right? I don't need it. All you got to do is not watch. <laughs> this is the part I don't understand, man. Why do you watch? Don't watch. Ain't going to hurt my feelings. Because I'm going to keep making the content. And I know through experience. See, when you, when you have a problem, when you can identify a problem people have, and you got a viable solution to help them solve that problem, you ain't got to worry about who going to watch. People going to watch. Because I got a viable solution to help people solve their problems, right? So I don't worry about that. I don't worry about the views. I just make the content. That's all. I don't worry about the views. I don't worry about it. What I worry about is how more and more people can I help? How can I get more help to people? That's what I worry about. I don't worry about the views. Because one thing I've learned on YouTube is that the views are going to come. The algorithm is going to do what the algorithm does. The algorithm is where you get all the views from. If, if, if the algorithm believes the content is decent, they're going to kick it out to people that never heard of you. Or if someone who has a larger YouTube presence watches one of your videos and they like it, guess what the YouTube algorithm is going to do? Let's say that person got a million subscribers on their, on their YouTube platform and they come to your video and like it. Guess what the algorithm is going to do? Push your content out to that million people. It's how it work, man. So, so one or two people who are disgruntled don't change nothing. Just stop watching. Thank you guys for tapping in. I appreciate you. I'm going to get ready to get out of here. It's a Friday. Oh, probably afternoon right now. And I've been on this live for over an hour. I appreciate you guys, man, tapping in, watching the content. Hit the thumbs up before you get out of here. Tap that thumbs up for me. I really would appreciate it. It means a lot to me. It's a way for you guys to just say thank you for the content. And like I said, 99% of you guys rock with me, and I, I, I appreciate it. Like I told you yesterday in yesterday's live, you changed my life. And I really mean that. Every now and then I do get on a little tangent with these knuckleheads, but that's rare. Y'all know normally I just keep rolling. But every now and then I will, I will spend a little too much time on knuckleheads. And that's what I did today. So I apologize for any of you who tapped in and I spent too much time on knuckleheads. But I thank you and I appreciate you. Y'all have a wonderful weekend. Like I said, if you want that Weeble uh, offer, you got to click on that link down in the description box. Open up the Weeble account. Get you up to 12 free stocks. Send me a DM on Instagram. Let me know you've opened it. And I'm going to send you a free Weeble tutorial video to walk you through how to use it so you can start building wealth, wealth ASAP. Again, guys, how to invest $1,000 a month, never work again. We have went through it. That's the blueprint. You're welcome to follow that blueprint or create your own. Do, do, do whatever you feel like you need to do, but put a plan in place. Get started, right? You don't want to work for somebody for the rest of your life. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing. Share the video. Smash that like button. Smash that like button a thousand, thousand, thousand times. Thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. And I'm going to catch you on the next video. Peace.